Hey everybody, welcome to Review A Day, episode number 151. I'm Leland Brungart, and thank you for being here. Episode number 151, here we are. Uh, back. We're back at it. Uh, I just want to talk about some DVDs I've been watching lately. I watch a ton of TV on DVD. I probably watch more TV on DVD than I, than I do actual films. Right now, I'm, I'm burning through West Wing season two. This is the third season. I'm very excited to get this on, but West Wing is... Uh, it, it's fucking great. I mean, I don't know of another writer who could get so high on mushrooms and, and write really, uh, intelligent political, uh, discourse. I don't know. Uh, Aaron Sorkin is, is, is a really great writer and the show just fills you with hope about the American, uh, government system. It, it's a really great show. I, I recommend that. Also, um, I don't know if I mentioned here on Review A Day, but I talked about it on the podcast for sure. I recently checked out um, The It Crowd, the British um, sitcom by, from Graham Linehan, the guy who also did Father Ted, and another show I've been watching, Black Books. Um, this show I, I really adore. It's about an Irish, uh, a drunk Irish uh, guy who owns a bookstore. He's very uh, grumpy, and he yells at a lot of his customers, and I highly recommend checking it out. I really like anything Graham Linehan has done. I, I watched Father Ted uh, a week or two ago, I watched the whole series, thought it was delightful and funny. The It Crowd is is really great. If you guys want some really solid, funny sitcoms, check out Black Books or, or The It Crowd. I know The It Crowd Season 1 is on DVD. I picked it up at at, uh, at Best Buy for like 20 bucks. Uh, really great, funny stuff, so, so check that out. Uh, review, movie review for you guys today. I'm reviewing Public Enemies, the new film from Michael Mann. Uh, this is the John Dillinger story with Johnny Depp as uh, John Dillinger. We got, and there we got Billy Crudup as J. Edgar Hoover. We've got um, Christian Bale, hot off of his ter- uh, great performance in Terminator. I'm winking. Uh, I hated that movie. But here we go. John Dillinger, Michael Mann applying his kind of digital filmmaking milieu that we've known to, uh, that we've known from films like Collateral or uh, Miami Vice. I was very excited to see that uh, look applied to a period film like this. I was really excited to, to see how it was going to come out. And I, I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, I think the most unique thing about this film is the look, is the fact that this film is shot on digital. It has a much more realistic, uh, grimy look. And I think it takes away some of the romanticism and gloss that I think often gets put on period films like this. You just kind of get caught up in looking like, oh, it looks like the 20s. It looks like another time. Everyone's dressed differently. I think the digital style took a lot of that away. Um, Unfortunately, I I don't think the digital look works for this film because I think this film is a really typical uh, melodramatic gangster film. And I, I really just kind of was confused why... Uh, Michael Mann chose to make the film look like this when it really plays out like every single gangster film I've ever seen, really. Um, it seems like such a, such a unique look to put on something so typical. I, w- I was kind of expecting something more maybe like you'd see from Robert Altman, maybe more of a uh, gangster film dissection, but this, this is definitely not that. And uh, this film, they, there was a couple strange choices. I was really surprised that they had the digital look and then that Michael Mann, uh, that there's these really sweeping, corny uh, musical cues. There are these really sweeping things that they play when you're really supposed to feel some sort of emotion for these characters. Uh, and I thought Johnny Depp and, and Christian Bale gave, gave pretty good performances. I think Johnny Depp really does a great job kind of doing a... Uh, not necessarily a Warren Beatty impression from uh, Bonnie and Clyde, but it, it, it's it's very similar, and I think anyone would be hard pressed not to uh, point out the kind of connections between Bonnie and Clyde and this film. Except I think this film is is far more typical. Uh, y- you know, there's the Johnny Depp character who is who's the gangster of the film, and the way we uh, relate to him is by they throw a love interest into the film, and I know that John Dillinger actually had you know, many women in his life and they just kind of throw Marion Cotillard into this film to kind of give give him a human side to it. And I think it works, but I don't think the relationship earns any of the the sentimentality that it tries to to get away with. The 
end of this film, the catharsis really relies on buying into that relationship, and I don't think it earns it at all. I think the film earns most of its... Uh, I, I, think the, I think the relationship works in the sense that Johnny Depp and Marion Cotillard are two very attractive people, and I think that attractive people tend to like each other. Uh, but I really didn't buy the the love between them, and I thought it was kind of uh, ham-fisted at time. I thought the ending was, wasn't was great and a little too sentimental for the type of film I, I liked, for the type of films I, I enjoy. It, at times, it just felt like Wendy and Lucy, you know, these kind of... Uh, Wendy and Lucy, the film by Kelly Reichert, it would be like them just adding this really dramatic score to Wendy and Lucy. Uh, Public Enemies deals in much broader strokes than that, that film does, but... Uh, I found myself bored a lot of the time. I found it going the way of many gangster films has. Uh, I would I would much uh, more suggest something like Miller's Crossing, the really great Coen Brothers gangster film, which I think is a typical gangster film with gangster film dialogue, but it is so much more unique than anything in Public Enemies has, which there's a lot of dialogue in Public Enemies that I thought was uh, kind of hammy. It, it, it just felt so typical. And I don't think the uh, digital look really did anything but make the film feel uh, kind of different and cool. But it, it was just so typical that uh, I, I didn't really enjoy every single second. It's a solid gangster film. If you if you want a really straightforward gangster film, I think you're going to like it. But uh, for me, I was just a little bit let down because I think I had a, a bit of a high expectation. I give uh, this film a 3 out of 5... Um, Check it out. I'm sure you guys will like it a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow.